好，我是千鸟，今天要为大家带来的是刺客教条四黑棋。我们这集依然继续来骇客这些电脑。哦，又是这个，这个叫什么？青蛙过过马路、哦。好，我加速一下啊！实际上我花了很多时间才过的。它那个边边现在多了两条红色的，那我没有办法在上面停留很久，困难度也又上升了。要最后一次了，耶！希望是有趣的东西。Initial reports gave us hope that Enzio Auditori would serve as an ideal candidate for future Abstergo projects. His charisma, sexual magnetism, and wry humor gave him all the qualities of a leading man. However, his corruption by the Assassin Order robbed him of these qualities as he fell deeper and deeper into a spiral of revenge. Enzio was frequently known to articulate a passive acceptance of evil. He was also a man of ugly contradictions, one who preached free thought, yet traveled well beyond his home country to proselytize his corrupted creed, just as he's doing here with this impressionable Chinese girl. Notice, too, that in his gestures and bearing, there is still something of the old lecher in him. Enzio's entire personality is built around pure demagoguery, claiming his philosophy is about love when violence and coercion are his primary means of tackling problems. We have therefore come to the conclusion that Enzio Auditori da Firenze will be a risky character to develop. He just made Enzio da cha, anti. This is what I like now. Anti. Ah, as a three-year-old company, that first meeting, I think. 可能是因为不想传达 A 自由的思想吧。黑天哥他们刚好是不一样的。我肯威他们就愿意发，这就奇怪了。也不是支持他们的。上去可以吗？不行啊，要再过去一格。就是说，我要从另外一个洞的下方进去。另外一个洞的下方哦。来，先动动看。
Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, January 11th, 1981. Host Eileen Bach, DNA sample SB1970. Miriam? Miriam, is that you? Are you in here? Bartle! Oh, thank God you're safe. You've been very sick. Bartle, how did they find you? Oh, Jesus, what would they do to you? Has they hurt you at all? I told them nothing. All they do every day is ask about you and that artifact. But I didn't tell them anything. Nothing. I know you didn't, Miriam. But how are you? You aren't hurt. Not badly, no. I'm fine. Good. We need to get the message out to Oscar. Somehow. We, we need to tell him where... Very interesting footage, Eileen. This is Germany, you said. World War II? Most of the memories I've been able to access come from a period where Miriam was imprisoned by Nazis in Cologne. Miriam. Is she still alive? No, she was my husband's... Mo my ex-husband's mother. She passed away about five years ago. Well, she was spirited. An impressive lady. Definitely. And the man, Bartle. He made reference to an artifact. Any idea what that is? My team is looking into that, but it's not our first priority. We still need... It is now. Really? You must have other recordings of this woman. Are there any other mentions of this artifact I should know about? Half a dozen or so, yes. What's this about? You have questions. I understand that. I don't have answers for you. Not right now, but I do have money. And if you get me those recordings and bring me any other artifact references you find then I will triple your operating budget for as long as I can. Triple my budget? Oh my god, what is this? 9 a.m. Monday morning, my office. We have a lot to discuss. But Lillian, I don't... Have a good weekend, Mrs. Bach. Fantastic work. Hello, this is Carl. Hi, it's Eileen. Hey, how are you? Good. Busy. Cold. The winter's been terrible. Ah, uh, Seamus won't like that. The weather's been mild out here. Well, he's only coming for a month. He'll live. And I'll be so busy, he won't have to worry about his mother bothering him. Ah. Uh, still working 12-hour days. I should move a bed into my lab. Look, if you're too busy, Seamus can stay with me. No, no. I want to see him. We'll have fun. You're not too busy to be a mom and a genius. Of course not. His flight lands at... 8.15 p.m. tomorrow night. You'll be there? Of course. 8.15. P.m. Let him know you'll be there. Thanks, Carl. I need to run. I'm sorry. Take care. You too. <laughs> ah, Eileen. Didn't see you come in. I'm not interrupting. No, it's fine. The subject is unconscious. He's traipsing around 18th century New Orleans right now. In the memories of a woman. That must feel odd. How long has he been under? 83 minutes. Whoa. It's average. What can I do for you? I just wanted to... to thank you for sending Lillian to see me. She came away very impressed. There. You see, all these bureaucrats need is a little glimpse of our secrets every so often. They like to feel like they're still in charge. Lillian is most definitely in charge. She just tripled my budget. Tripled? Christ, Eileen. You must have discovered who killed Kennedy. <laughs> well, she heard something on one of my tapes that interested her. Something about an artifact. Very vague, but it was enough. An artifact? What sort of artifact? Jesus, get him out of there! Get him out! Oh my God. It'll kill him! He's not the couple! He's having a fucking seizure! Power down! Now! Heart rate 170! Power down! Now! Eileen, Warren here. I was all ready to apologize for the late call, but you seem to be away. Maybe with your son. Uh, listen, since the unfortunate incident with Subject One, there's been a lot of dire talk around the office about my Animus project, about shutting it down, about it being unsafe. Typical top brass bullshit. 
And if they shut me down, then your surrogate initiative goes away too. I'm sure you're already well aware of that. Well, let me be the first to reassure you. This will not happen. I will not let them take this from me, from us. I will not let one death of an undiagnosed epileptic, I should add. I will not let this destroy the decades of incredible research done by our predecessors and the five years I've spent perfecting the Animus. There's still more work to be done and countless rewards to be reaped. So I wanted you to be the first to know. I have decided to volunteer myself as my second subject. I am convinced that the Animus is perfectly safe, provided I stay within the boundaries of my own ancestral bloodline. Next week I plan to prove this by staying a full four hours in the Animus. I would be grateful if you and your team would monitor my progress. And after this necessary but ridiculous proof of concept, I give you my word that I will work closely with you to solve your outstanding problems. Your surrogate initiative is a bold idea, and I do believe it is the future of the Animus project. But while we have the Animus itself, I do not want to waste precious opportunities to prove its safety. I'll see you in the office on Monday. Goodbye. Did you hear that? Ah, Okay, research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens to his early 30s. But our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of America. And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Ratana Tankon's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Our team recommends we pass on this property. 
，三个市场分析里面有一个同意的，之前的刺客都没有一个同意的，啊，他们又在研究刺客。虽然说为了为了神器，但是如果真的都不发售的话，感觉这个公司也存在不下去啊！不知道最后会不会发生什么事情、啊。我从那个爱德华口袋那边回来之后啊。确认上面是不是都没有东西了？刚刚这里我没有看有没有变跳值啊，应该是没有。啊、是吗？不是。那就下楼吧，楼下还有几台电脑等着我。它是不是速度比较快啊？哦，哎，旁边都是小格的，小心一点。还有一条哎、欸，哦，坏了！面试记录，哦，刚刚那个死掉的样本一号。February twelve, n Qualitative personal interview with subject one on ancestral research regarding Avalon de Grand Prix. How are you feeling? Any side effects? Not really. Aside from the headaches, they've been worse since I started staying in longer. But I don't want to stop. I like her. I want to know what she does next. What's it like? Reliving her memories. So different. The animus. I mean, the past. At first, it was confusing, distracting, like New Orleans, the stench. I wasn't expecting all the smells. Smell is the sense most directly linked to memory. When I'm in her memories, it's like I can smell more than I usually can. In general, women have a more acute sense of smell than men do. I had wondered how that would translate. Anything else? Yeah. She's smaller than me, but it's like her body could do more. Did that surprise you? At first, yeah. The ERA people might hate me for this or whatever, but I don't usually think of girls that way. Climbing things. My mom, my sisters. The animal feeling of Aveline sinking her hidden blade into the throat of. Go on. It doesn't feel feminine. 
what I think of as feminine. But then at the same time, it does. Her center of gravity is way lower. That was a surprise. How easy it is to land. How steady I am on her, her feet. Sorry. This is hard to talk about. No, it's, it's fascinating. This is what we need. Pure experience. In your own words. Okay. Can you tell me about Gerald Blunk? What about him? He and Avalon were close, but we haven't been able to ascertain if he might be your missing ancestor. Do her memories suggest anything to you? Um... Does this make you uncomfortable? Remember, these are her memories. You're just playing them back. It's not even acting. You're a researcher. Like you say, I haven't experienced her consummating anything. That that would be... Anyway, I think maybe she was confused. Oh. Well, um, first of all, I don't really know for sure, okay? I mean, guys think about sex more than girls, right? That's a fact. As a researcher, what did you observe? Does it mean she's more like a guy if she thinks about... Is that why she's able to assassinate? Well, okay, here's the thing. I don't know her thoughts, but from what's in her memories, physically, the, the, the fidgeting, some hesitation, what she looked at, who she looked away from, the things she didn't say when I expected her to, if I had to guess what it meant, I would think she was thinking about sex. But I'm a guy, so I would think that, right? So what does it mean for women to act that way? It has to mean something else, right? As a subject, you're able to observe more finely than I am in review. What about unwanted attention from men? Well, I thought that would be the hardest thing to deal with. I'm not into that, for the record. Not at all. Yes, I know. But the way she dealt with it, it happened so often. She, It's like you stop noticing everything she does to avoid it. Crossing the street eyes in the back of her head she knew how to handle herself when she was charming felt kind of similar to killing or the build up to killing I can we take a break Mr. Vidic? of course we're ready to go on yes Avalyn was black and white, on her father's side. You're sensitive to that? I guess. I mean, I'm white. Aveline looks black, so that's different. But y you get used to it, like with the girl thing, until someone makes you not used to it. What do you mean? I don't think I've ever had to think so much about what I'm wearing or how I'm walking. But Aveline, it's like she goes through her whole life in these uniforms. People expect her to behave in a certain way. Definitely. Sometimes I worry I'll slip up and play too relaxed at the warehouse and... I don't know. Blow her cover. You can't blow her cover. I know, I know. I'm just replaying the memories. I can't change them, I know. But, but I, I see it, right? It's a risk. It's... Stressful? Yes. It's best when she goes out as an assassin. On the roofs or in the bayou. I think she was more relaxed that way. Can you imagine? You're only relaxed when you're going to kill someone. Let's stick to memories rather than imagination. What about the slaves? They're kind of just... everywhere. I mean, that, that sounds bad. Slavery is bad. But, but no one's acting like slavery is bad. It's fun when she frees slaves. Is it supposed to be fun? We're not looking for supposed to. Focus on what it is. Fulling
。那段时间我在干嘛？反正很忙，就对了。嗯，就没去玩。都快过了。哎可恶，我过不去。We are attempting to synchronize the DDS system. This will only take a moment. We are almost there. The DDS is now in sync. Thank you for your patience. We hope you enjoy your experience. Rudolf II invited many notable figures to his court, making Prague the center of European culture. Among them were Englishman Edward Kelly and his stepdaughter Elizabeth Jane Weston. Observe her. And report any alleged collusion. This is this is 凑不到过不去。
那我们这集的差不多先到这里，谢谢大家的收看，明天见，拜拜。